Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings to another flight school related video. Today I'll be showing you 10 ways on how to determine the wind direction if you don't have a windsock or any other means of wind information. Be prepared to get your mind blown. <laughs> I'll let that settle in for a second and let's get started. Bueno, Bravo, hold on to Victor, but you right, Mark, 236. And Delta 676, uh, we're holding short of Today's video is brought to you by the Captain Joe book, Read and Do, 100 Checklists to Become a Better Version of Yourself. Are you looking for a great gift for a friend or yourself? Get Joe's book and be inspired by 100 motivational checklists for personal growth, acts of kindness, positive lifestyle habits, and much more. Find the link in the description box below. Okay, picture this, you are in your Cessna 172, flying towards an uncontrolled airport. It's an unplanned stop, so you don't have any weather information from that airport. You check the airport charts and they have no ATIS, no METAR and no tower controller. And to make matters worse, their windsock looks like this. So here are my top 10 tips for determining the wind direction during daytime hours. Number 10. When approaching an uncontrolled airport, let's say Pahokee, north of Miami, Florida, and there are other pilots already within the traffic pattern, they have to report their position on the Unicom frequency, which will sound like this. Pahokee traffic, Cherokee 48 Victor, downwind, runway 36, Pahokee traffic. Meaning the other aircraft in the pattern is flying onto runway 36. You haven't done much determining here, but your previous colleague has, and you can join the pattern accordingly. Even if there isn't another pilot in the pattern, you could ask on the Unicom frequency if anyone has just departed or landed in Pahokee and ask them which runway they used. Otherwise, get more information on the Miami Flight Services Station frequency if they have any wind readings in the area of Pahokee Airport to determine which runway is suitable to land on. Tip number nine. Yet again, you are in your Cessna and you have no means of wind data information at the desired airport. But there are two airports with ATIS frequencies which aren't too far away from your destination. Now you could listen to the both ATIS frequencies and if the winds are roughly the same speed and direction, the chances are high that the wind is very similar at your airport. I have to admit though, that this tip only really works with airports that are close to each other and there are no mountains or masses of water or large thunderstorms in between them as they all could affect the wind direction and speed. But it would work great during clear VFR night flights. Tip number eight. Okay, this tip is definitely in the extraordinary category. <laughs> you could determine the wind direction by looking at nearby cows. Yes, it is to be said that cows, 90% of the time, grass with their head facing into the wind and align their body parallel to the wind to reduce the wind chill on their skin. Secondly, it reduces the number of flies on their head and due to the wind passing over them, they don't have to smell their own. So if the runway is next to a field of cows and nine out of 10, are facing in one direction parallel to each other, you could predict that the wind is coming from the direction their heads are pointing to. Test that the next time you actually have a wind reading or a windsock and see where the cow's head is pointing. This definitely will work in Texas. There's a lot of cows in Texas. <laughs> Tip number seven, a long grass, cornfields, wheat fields, and anything that bows in the wind can be an indicator to determine the wind direction and even estimate roughly the wind speed. If you think of it, many air fields are built on a plot of land that previously was a crop field, meaning there still might be loads of crop fields near the built runway. Tip number six, lakes and ponds are another wind direction predictor. If you look at a small lake from above and there's more than five knots blowing, you clearly see a smooth patch on one side of the lake and the rest of the lake is rippled by the wind. Now the smooth part is in the wind shadow and shows the upwind side of the lake where it is sheltered by vegetation, houses, etc. Meaning 
you would have to land into the direction of the smooth part of the leg. And that brings us nicely to tip number five, because if there is a wind stronger than five knots, there is a high chance of sailboats, wind surface or kite surface on the leg. Most likely, all of them will move perpendicular to the wind and parallel to each other. Now, the surfers are using the downwind, meaning for you, you have to land into the direction they are leaning into. I'm actually just realizing it wouldn't hurt to get a sailing or a surfing license before becoming a pilot, because you'll learn a lot about wind and course corrections, etc. It's a good idea, good tip. Now the last four are the relatively easy ones. Coming as tip number four are the windmills and wind turbines. Now either of them turn their axis into the wind for maximum efficiency, meaning the wind direction is perpendicular to the rotor blades. So for landing, the spinner of your propeller should point within 180 degrees of the direction the spinner of the wind turbine is pointing. Then you know you are landing with a headwind. This makes sense, right? Tip number three. As mentioned earlier, smaller airports or landing strips are often located near cultivated crops, meaning there is a chance of a harvester or a tractor working on the adjacent field, blowing up dust, which gets picked up by the wind and giving you the direction and roughly the speed. A car going along a gravel road will also do the job. Tip number two. Now I mentioned the broken windsock at the beginning, but ever so often you see flags of the local flying club or commercial buildings nearby. They are a great indicator of wind direction and speed. And lastly, the easiest one of all, if present, I have to add, are chimneys emitting smoke, either of nearby houses or an industrial area. They even show you vertically at which level the wind is the strongest. For example, the steam coming out of big cooling towers at power plants are a great indicator for that. And if your destination airport is near such a chimney, highlighted in the airport chart, they can also be used as a visual beacon if the weather permits. Now just set your heading indicator towards the smoke emitting chimney in the distance. It's like an NDB. A smoke NDB, you could say. <laughs> and if you paid close attention during meteorology classes, there are types of winds that repeat in a daily cycle, such as the valley and mountain winds. Near coastal regions, you have the sea and land breezes. If no thunderstorms or other adverse weather is present, the wind direction at those locations can be predicted long in advance as they repeat the cycle every day. But that's a whole nother video. <laughs> the key message of this video is, if you are ever unsure which runway direction to land on at an uncontrolled airport, an airfield, a landing strip, a gravel road, a beach, or in the garden of your neighbor, <laughs> a combination of the given tips will help you determine the wind direction and help you choose the right runway. Trust me, there is nothing more satisfying after a safe landing and you exit your plane and you feel that fresh breeze on your skin and then realize, yep, I determined the wind direction correctly. <laughs> One question remains open. How do you determine the wind for departure? Now you can use any of the given tips or just grab a bit of grass, throw it into the air and check the flow direction. And the ultimate classic, wet your finger and hold it up into the air will also do the job. If you want to learn more about how does a windsock work, check out the video right here. And on that bombshell, here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, perform a touch and go at my website, check, and click the link in the description box below to get this fantastic book. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.